Hey everybody, it's Ken back with another video showing you what I've been buying lately. Uh, this one might be kind of quick. I only have nine packages here today, so let's get into it. All right, we have a dictionary of everyday wants containing 20,000 receipts in nearly every department of human effort by A. E. Human, published in 1875. So this is kind of sort of a recipe slash cookbook. I'll show you. Let's see, what do we got for chapters? We got accidents and emergencies, apiary, uh, carpentry and building, cements, glues and paste, cooking and baking, druggist and chemist, domestic animals, farm, orchard, garden and dairy, the household miscellany, household pets, household pests, hunting, trapping, and tanning. Whoop, I suppose it would help if I got her on camera for you. Uh, inks and blacking, um, medical and surgical, ornamental work, painting and papering, photography and the fine arts, preserving and storing, soap and candles, toilet, wardrobe, washing, and bla washing bleaching and dyeing, wines, liquors, and vinegar, uh, workers in glass, workers in metals, missile and miscellaneous. Uh, so this is just a kind of a recipe book. Let's see how to make a horse trot. Uh, the secret consists in using rollers on the front feet. These rollers are made of pieces of wood or horn turned round as big as a hickory nut with a gimlet uh, with a gimlet hole bored through the center of each and about 12 of them strung on a string of narrow strap, which should be smaller than the hole, and then tied or buckled very loose around the fetterlock joint next to the hoof, so they will play loose up and down when the horse is in motion. So that is how you get a horse to trot. Let's see, petroleum refined to decolorize petroleum, any of the blacking agents uh, known may be employed for this purpose. It is a simply a question of dollar and cents and manipulation. Blacking powder, the cheapest material is uh, to be, let's see, is to be stirred into the oil in sufficient quantity, which depends, of course, on the amount of color to be destroyed. Well, let's see, how do we make gooseberry vinegar? Bruise the gooseberries when ripe, and to uh, every quart, put three quarts of water, stir them well together, and let the whole stand for 24 hours. Then strain it through a canvas bag. To each gallon of liquor, add one pound of brown sugar, and stir them well together before they are put into the cask. Proceed with all these respects as before. This vinegar process uh, possesses a pleasant taste and smell, but uh, but raspberry vinegar, which may be made on the same plan, is far superior to the uh, in these respects. So the raspberry vinegar might taste better than the gooseberry vinegar. But if you only got gooseberries, you make the gooseberry vinegar. That's kind of a fun one everything you need to know about cooking and farming and home health. Hmm, how do I open this one? I guess we're gonna cut it right there, see what happens. Here we go, I think this is a lot of five books um, that I bought on eBay. Uh, we got the Chiswick Shakespeare with these beautiful Art Nouveau cover designs. Uh, what do we got? We got Pericles, Othello, the Comedy of Airs, and Anthony and Cleopatra. I really like these. They're small, but they're pretty. The nice floral binding. Anthony Cleopatra, Anthony and Cleopatra by William Shakespeare. Uh, this volume was published in 1900. I think they're all 1900. 
Comedy of Errors. Nope, Comedy of Errors was 1902. Gonna have to see if I can track down more of these volumes. I really like the binding. Othello, 1899. Uh, these were published by George Bell and Sons in London. Not sure if they're... Oh, they are illustrated. Good night, good night. Here is the man this more. I am very sorry that you are not well. And then Pericles, again published in 1902. This was kind of an odd volume because it had the four Shakespeare book. And then this one, I think, is some sort of prayer book. Kind of a chunky little leather book. A book of common prayer and administration of the sacraments and other rites and ceremonies of the church. Uh, together with the Psalter or Psalms of Davis. This one was published in 1845. So just a nice little uh, leather prayer book. There you got the Psalms in the back of the book. And pretty good condition for being from 1845. Uh, most of these will be up in eBay here probably in about two weeks. eBay seller Animal Vet 52 for you don't uh, for those of you that do not know. Um, I will be auctioning all of this off. Or I think all of these will be up for auction. Might put a couple of them here in the bookstore. Also, for any of the, you that are wondering, I do buy books, so if you're local or online, you can send me some pictures or stop in if, you, if you're local. Show me what you have for sale. Um, I'm always in the mood for buying books. I have a couple big deals hopefully coming up later this week. All right, here we have a big leather book on religious denominations. The Religious Denominations in the United States, Their History, Doctrine, Government, and Statistics, with a pre preliminary sketch of Judaism, Paganism, and Mohammedism, by Joseph Belcher, uh, with 200 illustrations, or nearly 200 illustrations, published in 1864. Show you the frontispiece illustration on that one. Judaism. Uh, the sketch of the religious views of the previous times necessary commences with Judaism as being the oldest of all systems of revealed religion. And it is pleasant to remark that scriptural religion has in all ages been essentially the same. Unity of design has been preserved amidst its modifications, both with regard to its objects and as to the means by which that object has been realized. Let's see, American Sabbath Keepers. The Seventh-day Baptists in America date from about the same period that, have been, that their brother in England began to organize, organize regular churches. Mr. Stephen uh, Mumford was one of the earliest among them. He came from England to Newport, Rhode Island in 1664 and brought with him the opinion that the Ten Commandments as they were delivered from Mount Sinai were moral and immutable, and that it was an anti-Christian power which changed the Sabbath uh, from the seventh day to the first day of the week. 
Not sure if this one has any illustrations. There we go. We got the Roman Catholic Church, Catholicism. Oh, here we go. Got some illustrations in the chapter on Quakers. The Moravians. So this one is illustrated. It's not the greatest condition, um, but for being so old, not half bad. We have a big, beautiful leather Bible. Really great uh, binding on that one. Really nice condition. Um, I think I already have this one sold. I know a dealer in New York that's looking for some big, beautiful Bible, so I'm going to offer it to her. Um, yeah, great binding. Really, really high quality condition. They don't get much better than that. I do wish it had class, that would add a touch of elegance to it, but I guess you can't get her all. Uh, if you are looking for Bibles, I have tons and tons of them on eBay right now. Uh, I have a German one from 1727. I have a another big fancy leather binding German one, and then I think I have a, um, probably five or six of them in English. Uh, ranging from the 1830s to the 1890s-ish. Um, got a few of them in the store as well. So whoever's looking, I definitely have some Bibles for you. The Holy Bible together with the Apocrypha, Psalms and Meter, and Marginal References and Readings. Let's see if there's a date on this one. Well, I don't see one right here. I'm sure there's a, hopefully a date somewhere. I would guess uh, this one's... Oh, there we go, 1880. So a lot of these big Bibles have, um, that one has some Doré illustrations, it looks like. Um, they usually have a big dictionary of the Bible in the front that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of illustrations. And then usually there's some illustrations in the text as well. Everything you need to know about Bible history. Don't remember if this one had any family history pages. Let's see, it has the family history pages, but there's no information in them. So, again, another Dore illustration. Again, really nicely illustrated. Beautiful, beautiful leather binding and very nice condition. But that one's probably sold, so. Kind of a tattered old book. Uh, 
Uh, minutes of the Methodist conferences annually held in America from 1773 to 1794, inclusively. This one was published in Philadelphia in 1795. Minutes of some of the conversations between the preachers in connection with Reverend Mr. John Wesley, Philadelphia, June 1773. And actually, I think... I think this one has some information about them wanting to abolish slavery, so that's why I tracked down this one. I don't remember what page that was on. But if nothing else, there's lots of interesting early Methodist information in this book. Definitely wish it was in better condition, but for being 220 some odd years old, it's not horrible. Catechism and Confession of Faith, which contained a true and faithful account of the principles of the, and doctrines of the people called Quakers, to which added, which is added, the ancient testimony of the said people received, with some of the rules of the discipline uh, established among them, extracted from the minutes of the yearly meeting published in Philadelphia in 1773. Nice of someone to write it there in ink, but... Whatever can you do? coming off that one uh, we got the plays of Euripides we got the Electra of Euri uh, Euripides and the Trojan women of Euripides nice leather binding kind of wish they were in slightly better condition but what can you do um, translated by Gilbert Murray published in 1915 looks like this one was published in 1907 Media of Euripides and the El uh, what is that? The Elgis of Euripides. What is that word? Oh, the Elkisist. Let's see, Elkisist of Euripides, 1915. Again, really a uh, pretty bindings. are uh, the Rhesus of Euripides
and the Ephigean in Taurus of Euripides. 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 All right, two more boxes. I guess it's been kind of a light week of buying online. I think this was a random collection of 32 leather volumes. Came from the UK. I always get the best stuff from the UK. But like a box this big to ship from the UK is probably about $100. So it needs to be uh Halfway valuable to, to buy the books plus shipping to make it worth it. All right, let's see what we got here. I guess we're just going to rip it. Sometimes the tape comes off nice and easily, sometimes not so much. It's like we got two volumes, the works of Lord Byron. Pretty, pretty decent condition. Let's see. Uh, the works of Lord Byron with a life and illustrative notes by William Anderson, complete in two volumes. That's good. Let's see if there's a date. No date, but I would guess those are from the 1850s. Again, nice marbled uh, page edges and end papers. Always appreciate when they do that. I would assume you've got a little uh, portrait of Lord Byron there on the spines. Yeah, it kind of amazes me when people auction. Like, this was one auction lot here, 32 volumes. I mean, I probably would have paid, I don't know, maybe $30 to $50 just for the Lord Byron. And, I mean, this lot wasn't cheap, but um, definitely happy with it. Works of Tobias Smollett. Ooh, again. Stunning, uh marble work there uh the miscellaneous works of tobias smollett tobias smollett volume 5 published in 1806 i don't remember if there was any other volumes in this of uh smollett volumes the adventures of sir lancelot greaves chapter one Kind of an interesting binding. Got a big old stain there on the front cover. Someone must have been drinking their coffee. Spilled it right on the front cover. Oh, looks like um, Pavrika Books of the Bible. Hmm, that one's kind of a kind of a mystery. Sometimes the first volume, I assume this is from a set. Yep, looks like volume. Can't quite read it. Uh, and actually, there, the stamp on the front. Let's see if I can get the light shining on it. It says the Society for Promoting Christian, Christian Knowledge. There you go. Kind of read it there. Prayer book. This one looks a little banged up. What does that say? The bequest, the bequest of the late Sir W. C. Melink Melicott. Kind of.
kind of ugly condition, missing the title page. Let's see if there's a second title page we can get the date off of. No, nope, got the Psalms of David. Nope, no second title page, so that one's kind of a mystery. Bible, just a cheap, modern, limp leather, leather copy. Not overly exciting. Looks like we got two matching volumes here from a set. The Baker's Wife, or Court and City, a novel by Miss Gore. This is volume one, published in 1843. And volume two, also published in... 1843. Beautiful. Here we have Antidote, 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 Antidote Biography, William Pitt, Earl of Chatham, and Edmund Burke by John Timms, published in 1862. There you have the Earl himself. Looking very distinguished. There you have Edmund Burke. Nice book. Catherine of Medici, Medici, 1879, in Francais, so I will not be reading that one. Alright, looks like we have some Sir Walter Scott volumes. Volume 3, 4, 5, 6, containing Guy Mannering, Antiquary, Antiquary, and Rob Roy. I think there's some more volumes. I don't know if it's complete. Tales and Novels of Sir Walter Scott in 12 volumes, published in 1823. Looks like we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Might have them all. That would be good. Here we have volume 1256. These are, oh, okay, what do we got? We got novels and tales, and then we also have, okay, so we got the novels novels and tales of Sir Walter Scott, and then we also have the historical romances of Sir Walter Scott. So let me unwrap the rest and see what we got. Might not be so complete after all. See if I can do a little organization quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, here we go. Normally I don't suggest standing books up on their spines or the opposite edge of the spine, but uh, these are pretty, pretty solid conditions so it won't hurt them. Uh, so we have novels and tales, one, two, three, four, five, six. 9, 10, 11, 12, and then we have historical romances, number 5 and 6, so not so complete, but that's okay, beautiful little leather books from the 1820s, pretty nice condition. Can you imagine these books are 200 years old, how many different owners they've had, and um, I guess they were printed in London, I think, is it London? Nope, Edinburgh, ooh, that one kind of has some damage. Um, so they're printed in Edinburgh. All 
right, this one's a little on the rough side. Oh, missing the title page. So it looks like Original Poems for Infant Minds. That one's pretty, pretty rough. This one's also pretty rough. Uh, Psalms and Hymns for Public Worship. There's an inscription there in the front, dated 1859. William Coles. Mm, not sure what that last name is there. Circa 1850s. Looks like we got a couple older volumes. Uh, Biblia Sacra, Volume 4, published in 18, nope, sorry, 1726. Gospel of Matthew. What is that? Is that Latin? I guess I'm not 100% sure. Looks like Latin to me. Acts of the Apostles. Again, pretty cool for being 300 years old. Uh, here we have light, uh, Letters of the Right Honorable Lady, written during her travels in Europe, Asia, and Africa to persons of, uh, to, of distinction, men of letters, etc., in different parts of Europe. Uh, this is 2nd edition, Volume 2, published in 1763. Let's see what she was doing over in Europe. Let's see, Letter 27. You see that I, I am very exact in keeping the promise you engaged me to make. I am not, however, whether your curiosity will be satisfied with the accounts I shall give you, though I can assure you I desire to have, um, I desire, the desire I have to oblige you in the utmost of my power has made me very diligent in my inquiries and observations. Okay, I want to see what you were up to on your travels. Let's see. These women who are called and esteem themselves queens look upon this liberty as the greatest disgrace and affront that can happen to them. She threw herself at the sultan's feet and begged him to pognar, pognar her rather than use his brother's widow with the contempt. She represented, she represented to him in agonies of sorrow that she was privileged from this, mis from this misfortune by having brought five princess princes into the Ottoman family, but all the boys being dead and only one girl surviving. This excuse was not received, and she was compelled to make her choice. Very interesting. The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, just a cheap little... Leather bugger. George Eliot's life, as related in her letters and journals, arranged and edited by her husband, uh, J.W. Cross, Volume 2. There you got a nice portrait of her. Uh, published in 1885. Uh, looks like a beat up volume of Sir Walter Scott. Gosh, that junky stuff just kind of piles up and piles up and gets boxed up for years until I figure out what to do with it. Looks like we got selections from Robert Browning. Selections from the poetical works of Robert Browning. Browning, first series, published in 1894. Show you the contents pages quick.
the English Humorist of the 18th Century, a series of lectures delivered by uh, in England, Scotland, and the U.S. of A. by William Makepeace Thackeray, published in 1863. Bugger, Chambers English Dictionary, pretty hefty dictionary, Chambers English Dictionary, pronouncing, explanatory, and etymological, etymological, edited by Thomas Davison, with illustrations, published in 1898. Seems I have very mixed luck with these big leather dictionaries. But people do look into um, enjoy old dictionaries to see how definitions have changed over the last over the history of time. So yeah, it looks like this lot contained a nice mix of uh, there's a few really good books and um, some stuff that is kind of on the junky side. My magazine, volume twenty. What is my magazine about? My magazine, the monthly companion of children of the children's newspaper, edited by author me. Volume 20, 1924. Romeo's Good Night to Juliet. Life's New Voyage of Discovery, a Great Adventure into the Unknown. like there's quite a variety of contents in this one the men who made australia known a continent's hundred years of heroes the gold candlestick of jerusalem is it buried in the tiber Sports Day at Hippo School. That's kind of a fun little illustration. Oh, who's going to win? The lion or the giraffe? It's close. Oh, and you got the little duck and the pig way in the back. Looks like the elephant uh, is going to come in fourth. Followed with the bear and that other little bird. That's a fun little illustration. Kitten. The kittens turn the tables. Ha, ha, ha. Peter goes to Jerusalem. The homeless race, 12 million wanderers on the face of the earth. Very distinguished gentleman there. The British League of Nations, why not make the most of it? Do not laugh at the barnacles. Speak gently to the herring and kindly to the calf. So blithsome with the bunny and barnacles don't laugh. Give nuts unto the monkey and buns unto the bear. Never hint at currant jelly if you, chain, if you chance to see a hare. O oh, little girls, pray hide your combs when tortoise uh, draw nigh. And never in the hearing of a pigeon whisper pie. And give the stranded jellyfish a shove into the sea. Be always kind to animals whenever you, wherever you may be. Well, that's a fun little poem. Do not laugh at Barnacle. That one's by J. Ashby Sterry, if you want to look it up. Again, just a really cool kind of children's magazine. A bunch of different contents. Oh, the diff 30 different kinds of hands. You got the factory hand, the handbag, the helping hand, the hand of pork, a slack hand, the hand mirror, hand wheel, hand of cards, hand mill, hand screen, hand book, hand pot, hand maid, hand bell, second hand, 
hand line, hand bridge, hand gallop, hand post, hand lead, or hand lead, hand guard, hand spike, hand wheel, hand screw, hand sail, hand of ginger, hand car, Buddha's hand, hand barrow, and hand of bananas. Okay, I think I've only heard about a third of those um, phrases used. All right, last box, and then I'm going to call it night. All right, attempt to not get packing peanuts all over the floor. I've got another big bugger. I think it's about 14 inches tall, maybe more, maybe 15 or 16 inches tall. Nice modern leather binding on it. Got the works of King Charles I, defender of the faith with history of his life, as also of his trial and martyrdom. Published in London in 1662. There you got a portrait of King Charles the first himself. No crown. Where's his crown? Shouldn't he have a crown on? The life of King Charles the first. Charles I, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, was the son of James the Sixth, King of Scots, and Anne his wife, a daughter of Denmark. By his father defended to him all the rights, together with their blood of all our ancient, both Saxon and Norman kings, to this empire. For the Lady Margaret, sister and sole heir of the Edgar Atheling, the last surviving prince of the English Saxons, being married to Malcolm Connor, king of Scots, conveyed to his line the Saxons, and Margaret, daughter of Henry VI, married to King James the fourth quite a mouthful Let's see chapter 22 upon his majesty's leaving Oxford and going to the Scots although Goth hath given me three kingdoms yet in these he hath not now lest me any place where I may with safety and honor rest my head showing me that himself is the latest the safest Look at that. Look at how they look at safest right there. Isn't that confusing? Safest. Safest refuge. And the strongest tower of defense in which am I put am I, I may put my trust. In these extremities I look not to man so much as to God. He will have it thus that I may wholly cast myself and my now distressed affairs upon his mercy who hath both the hearts and hands of all men in these dispo in his dispose. Whew, all the hath nots and doths and these and thys. Let's see the Lord and the Commons after he his return out of Scotland. Chapter thirty three. My lords and gentlemen, I think is it fit after so long absence that this first occasion to speak a few words unto you. But it is no ways in answer to master speaker's learned speech. Albeit I have stayed longer than expected, I have done when I went away. Yet in this I have kept my promise with you that I have made all the haste back again that the settling of my Scotch affairs um, could any way permit, in which I have had so good success that I will um, confidently affirm to you that I have left the nations a most peacefully 
or peaceable and contented people. Whew. So again, very cool book on uh, the life and works of Charles I, published in 1662. Very cool. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, eBay seller, Animal Vet 52. I always have tons and tons of interesting auctions going. Um, so you might find something worth bidding on.